Look, we're, we're trained to buy houses. We're trained to save for retirement. We're tra- trained to leave cash in banks. Uh, I was doing a 7,000 people in Atlanta the other day. And I said, how many of you have money in the bank? You know, two-thirds of the room. I have money in the bank. Well, you, you, why would you want money in the bank? You have more confidence in Wells Fargo than you do yourself. All that money should be invested in the enhancement of self. How many of you have money in, in, in equity in a home? Um, you know, half the room. I have equity in a home. They're proud of it, too. I'm like, why would you have equity in your home? That only benefited the banks. You borrowed money from a bank to live in one place that you call home and you're proud of and you like it, as opposed to like, wow, why, what if I had that equity? What if I had that money, that 80000 invested in my business? How many have money in retirement accounts? Okay, probably a third of the room had a retirement account of some sort. Why, why would you have money sitting in an account for, for when you're 70, 60, whatever the retirement age is, 63, when you could have that money working for you right now? So it's a way we've been programmed and trained too, right? To, to trust somebody else that we're, we, we can't trust ourselves. Uh, diversify your stocks. Who, who was that for? Who did that benefit the most? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's not what the wealthiest people on this planet do. They put all their eggs in one basket. The richest people that have ever lived on this planet, one investment, and they watched it, and they made sure it worked. Railroads only. McDonald's only, right? They, didn't, they, they weren't in uh, uh, 700 different stocks. The creation of ETFs and mutual funds was for Wall Street, not Main Street. It was not for the middle class. It was on the backs of the middle class to make Wall Street rich. Because nobody can figure out 700 different investments. Again, confusion. Confusion in the masses. Hey, don't, don't. The ETFs is going to be the biggest. The biggest uh, redistribution of wealth in America will be the collapse of ETFs. There's trillions of dollars sitting in them right now where masses of people have been tricked, hoodwinked by Wall Street to say, put all your money in right here in these mutual funds. My man's sick over there. He's like, fuck, I, three of them. He just hit the dam. I got cash in the banks. I got... I got equity in a house, you know, and, 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 and I got uh, ETFs, okay? It will be, when, when the old man Bogler died, uh, Vanguard, the founder of Vanguard, he says, when these get too big, they will fold. Too many people will try to exit at the same time. So all that goes back to what? It goes back to, like, how many different places you're getting your data from? Warren Buffett does not diversify. Mark Zuckerberg did not, did not diversify. Uh, Elon Musk, he's not a diversification guy. What was the first company he sold? Was it PayPal? Where did he make his first money? I think so. Yeah, I think it was PayPal. We can verify it. But. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he gets a score. And what's he do? He invests a bunch of money in SpaceX, a bunch of money in Tesla, and, and then I think it was the tunnels. He didn't diversify. Dude, these are three things he put all his money in, and then he rented where he lived. He doesn't even own a home when he does this. He's like, I don't want a house. I want my money working. I want to make an impact with cash. Yeah. I don't know if that's too much for you guys out there, but man, it's a lot for you and your girlfriend to talk about. Yeah. She wants a house. So I just want a house and I want to be happy and we're going to have little babies and we're going to get a little, we're going to put her at the Cardones live here, but who's coming to your house? Nobody's coming to your house. You know, so uh, uh, Damon John said, man, your jet's a terrible investment. I said, my jet is a better investment than your house because my jet will take me places. And your house goes nowhere. Okay? Nowhere. Well, it's going to go up in value. Uh, wrong. Wrongo, Damon Jono, Shark Tanko. Okay? <laughs> wrong. Okay? You pay 6%. The seller paid 6% to the broker to buy the house. I'd love to see what you guys think about this. When you go to sell the house, there's another six points. He's like, well, I didn't pay the six points when I bought it. I said, well, it came out of the proceeds of the house. You paid for it, okay? When you sell the house, it's another six. That's 12%. you got to make 12% on your house just to keep up with the brokers, okay? You live in New York. It's 2.6% per year for property taxes. You live there 20 years, that's 40, I'm sorry, 52%. So you got six, you got six, that's 12, plus 56. You have to make 68% to break even with brokers and the property taxes. You hadn't mowed the lawn. You hadn't painted the place. You hadn't fixed the place. And you hadn't made a payment yet. Interest rate on a, on a home today is about 45 to 5%. So 5% for 20 years, that's 100%. Who made all the money in this deal? The brokers, property taxes, and the bank. 
You'd have to make like 168% on your money to break even on the house. 